A hundred years ago, half the people in North America lived on farms. Today, there are so few family farms left, the U.S. no longer counts them in the census. What's happened in our lifetime since World War II was the depopulation of the countryside and the industrialization of agriculture based totally on cheap fossil fuels. Small farmers were put out of business by cheap food raised on giant factory farms in places where crops are grown all year. But the bounty of this industrial agriculture has a hidden price, and the bill is coming due. When you have like huge grand sized farms that are trying to you know, provide for the entire United States coming from one area, you're just not going to get a quality product, you're not going to get a nutritious product. We seem to feel that it makes economic sense to grow sheep in British Columbia and yet buy the sheep that have been grown in New Zealand and shipped all the way here. And the reason, of course, is that the global economy renders the biosphere or earth, air, fire and water as an externality. They're not included in the costs. So you have this efficient system, but it, it doesn't make any earth sense at all. I grew up on a cherry orchard that used a lot of pesticides and I left there feeling like I, it was a complete insult and attack on the environment. I want to keep in my customers very healthy and for that reason I grow organic. In the Pacific Northwest, small farmers are making a comeback. They're growing much healthier food and lots more food per acre while using less energy and water than factory farms. What it's done for us is brought back the pride that we kind of lost. We have given part of ourselves and our land to the people and they, they appreciate it. We're developing a regional, sustainable food system. It seems insane to be dependent on an outside food source when we actually have the potential of feeding ourselves year-round. We planted the seeds in December and then moved them in here in the end of February. One of the best parts about our level of farming is that there are people walking around on the land and looking at the crops. When the berries first start, we send those people who don't like raspberries out to pick the raspberries. And I had one woman who's allergic to peas, so she's the first pea picker. Here's a nice I think we need a lot more of us small farms that are proud to be farmers. So these guys are broilers that you see on the left. Some of them, you see are roosters. Um, some roosters don't make it. The hens don't like them. My goodness, they're mean to them. There's a beautiful Rhode Island red rooster right there. Anything we sell on the farm, we have to be able to um, say we can feed it to our daughter. If we can feed it to our daughter, we can sell it to you. That's the bottom line. And I don't think you can get any higher standard than that. Yeah. I want to see agriculture flourish here. And if we were able to show that you can have large metropolitan areas adjacent to areas that are growing your food, that is smart, whether it's here or it's in China. So somebody's got to demonstrate its value. With that whole experiment, based totally on cheap fossil fuels, with that experiment coming soon to an end, how do you come to a new balance? How do you come back to the repopulate the countryside, but in a new way?